Today I will be going through some of the basic tools that I use for my hobby. I will be showing you basic tools such as soldering irons, um, multimeters, uh, just various different things from precision screwdrivers to pliers to helping hands, just different things that I like to use and little tricks that I use to make this safe and make it fun because a lot of the things I do could be dangerous. You could start a fire, you could electrocute yourself, or you could hurt someone else. So safety is always my main concern and that's why it makes this a fun and safe hobby for me. I hope you enjoy my videos and I hope you enjoy the one I'm making today and I hope you learn something from it, take something from it. Please give me uh, comments in the comment section down below, likes, dislikes, either one. That way I know what kind of videos to make in the future. And please subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the more videos I'll be able to make because I'll know people are enjoying what I'm making. All right, let's get started with my tools. Okay, here are some of my tools laid out. Not all of them. I have a lot of screwdrivers and various little things like that that I didn't feel that I needed to include in this video. Uh, but the basic tools I have here, I have my soldering station, which is a weller. It's adjustable. It doesn't have an actual temperature readout on it, but it does give you an idea of the variation of the heat that you're using. It has the sponge that you can wet, which is great for uh, getting slag off of your uh, soldering iron in between solders to keep from having messy solders. Um, over here I have another weller. I love weller soldering irons. They're my favorite for the price. Uh, this one I mainly use for desoldering circuits, removing components from circuit boards. And one of the things I like about this one the most is it has light up LEDs on it. It has three of them. And if I remember correctly, this one's a 20 watt, which isn't as more, as powerful as they get, but it's powerful enough to do some do some damage to some circuit boards. So you have to be careful not to press too hard and make sure that you get your solder just right. Um, basic things, cutting cords, maybe clipping into a circuit board that I don't need the whole circuit board for, be able to get to parts more easily. Uh, scissors, you always need scissors. You might need to snip a small wire, something like that. Um, pliers, just a basic set of pliers, which are great for cutting large wires. I have just a simple flathead screwdriver for prying things if I need to, something I'm not too worried about breaking. Channel locks, which are great for removing uh, bolts and nuts off of circuit boards. Um, I have a, a screwdriver, a, self, a ratcheting screwdriver, which is great for uh, tearing in the stuff really quickly. I have my precision tool set, which I got this at AutoZone. And I've had this thing forever. I've actually lost a couple of parts out of it here and there. But it has basically everything I need for working on circuit boards. Uh, there are a few times I need something a little bit smaller than what this has on it. But it's very rare that I do. I've had this forever. It's a great product. I really like it. Helping hands. These are awesome. These right here are one of the best tools anybody that messes with electrical stuff can have when it comes to sur soldering circuit boards. They help hold small circuit boards in place, hold wires in place while you solder them. And of course the magnifying lens, as always, to help be able to see small circuits. Uh, down here, of course, I have solder. And this is rosin core solder and this is specially designed for working with electronics it's silver instead of lead it's i really enjoy using this it's a good good solder it works really well i hardly ever have any slag anything like that this right here is something a lot of people may not be too familiar with this is called a desoldering pump when you're soldering a circuit board and you want to get the solder off once you get it heated up because you're trying to replace a component, you press down this plunger, hold this down on the on the uh, solder bond you want to, or solder joint that you want to remove. Press the button, plunger pops up, sucks out the solder, push it back down, kicks it back out. Uh, just some basic things here: rulers, because you might need to measure a length of wire. Uh, smaller ruler, just for the same thing. Uh, for cleaning magnet wire which is really fine wire um, or cleaning any electrical component before you solder it into place a little bit of a, 
of uh, fine grit sandpaper and an emery board for the same thing. Um, a clamp, just a simple little clamp help hold things in place. Like say I needed to clamp down this onto something to keep it from moving around. Well, there you go. I got my clamp. Uh, same thing for this. A C clamp, which is very handy for exactly the same thing. You might need to hold something in place and this is perfect for that. Uh, this little bit of wire you see right here, they make a product called desoldering wick, which I've used in the past and it works really well. But I found just using stripped copper wire, copper braid wire, as a desoldering wick, which you can see there's a little bit of solder already on the end of this from where I've used it. It's great for getting solder out of the way and any ex excess solder. You hit with the pump and you're good to go to remove the component without having to use too much heat. Uh, alligator clips, always handy for different things. Testing circuits, holding things in place. It's another clamp. This right here is a precision soldering tool. And basically what this is for is if you just need to nudge a, a component into place on a circuit board or this end you can use to help pry up a circuit or a component on a circuit board without damaging it and I've, I've used this a lot it actually used to have another leg to it but I found it actually works better now that it's broken um, over here we have flux flux is great it's great for keeping your soldering iron clean it's great for making good clean solders it's an essential flux is an essential and it's the flux is basically what's in the rosin core of this solder. Okay, and then I have my multi multimeter here, which is a great one. I got this one at Walmart in the automotive department. The one that they sell in the electronics department isn't worth a crap. I burned out three of them testing circuits. I do a lot of high voltage applications. I've been a little bit more careful with this one. This one cost me, I think, 25 bucks, and the other ones I had cost me about 20 bucks, and this one's lasted me way longer. And one of the things I like about this is this right here. This is a thermometer. You actually have a thermometer on this for doing automotive work. That's why it was in the automotive department. And it's pretty accurate. It's accurate down to about a degree. And it helps show if transistors are overheating on a circuit board, or if a transformer is overheating, if a capacitor is overheating, anything like that. Uh, it just helps to get an idea if, you're, if your circuit's going to overheat or not. Alright, and I have my basic test leads right here. This is the basic test leads that came with it. And these are test leads from previous broken multimeters that I've had and what I've done with these is for stuff whenever I need something held in place I've soldered these little alligator clips onto the end where the test leads would have been and it's great because that allows me to clamp it down on something and be able to do hands-free work with the multimeter um, basically that's it that's my little collection of tools here uh, another couple of simple things you might want to use markers to be able to mark what you're doing. It's always a good idea, especially if you're marking on circuits, on a circuit board. Uh, what is what? That's why I have a red and a black, positive and negative. Um, and for home safety, and just to keep the smell down, I always do all my soldering under the hood for my stove, which is actually something I repaired myself once before. Yeah, I know it's dirty under there, but that is actually the fan out of a microwave. The old one burned out, so I replaced it with one out of a microwave, which is one of my favorite things to take apart. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do a little breakdown on some of these individual things now.